Hey, hey, welcome to Advancing AI, where we talk all things AI and machine learning. This is episode three of our Graph Rack series. Um, without further delay, we're going to have Chris back and we're going to talk about how we really implement Graph Rack. Hey, welcome, Gary. Chris. How's it going? Good, good. It's good to have you back. This is episode Thanks, three, everyone. where we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about Llama Index and MS Graph Rag in a very high level sense, but we're going to run through some notebooks. Brilliant. So take it away, Chris. We've got 10 minutes to do this. Let's go. All right, Chris, take it away. Yeah, sure. So this is the local Llama Index implementation. Um, the headings above are just describing what's going on in the cell. I won't go through line by line, otherwise we'll be here for all of the day. <laughs> So we but specifically in this one, we'll mention that we're using the knowledge graph index, um, simple directory reader to call in our documents and our models that we're using are Azure OpenAI, both text ADA and GPT-40. Let's move on. So we're also setting some logging. I won't run that as I've just run it, but we've just called in our secrets. So we're using our Neo4j database and our Azure OpenAI and API keys, all of that fun stuff. So we've called those in. We're setting some envir environment variables and using the secrets that we called in earlier. Here we are setting our OpenAI models and our embedding models. Sorry, we're setting our prompt models and our embedding models and using the secrets that we described earlier and the environment variables that we used. And here we're just setting up our environment variables for the Neo4j. But the most important thing is that we have some documents. So we've got some documents that we want to load in. Um, this is just referencing a directory that we have. In this directory, we have a series of documents, uh, specifically contracts. These contracts pertain to a agreement that was made between the Fellowship of the Ring and the and all the characters within Lord of the Rings. It's the contract that they signed when they went off to destroy the ring. So we're going to call in those documents, and you can see that they're, you know, they're very specific about what they're doing and destroying that ring. But we called those documents in, and we're then going to go create a knowledge graph out of them. So you can see this should take. You can see those requests being sent off to OpenAI. We will let that run. I think it takes about eight seconds. So that's our knowledge graph created um, from about five documents, about six kilobytes each. Not massive documents, but for our use case, this is all we all we need to do. Here, we're setting the index that we want to create from the knowledge graph. So from documents, create a knowledge graph and set it as index. Use the documents that we were referencing earlier. And here's the query engine that comes from that knowledge graph index. So we run that. Sends off some more. Requests to OpenAI takes about nine seconds, pretty quick. Um, but most importantly, let's get to the interesting part where we actually start to query that knowledge graph. So we have five separate questions that are we want to know about this doc, these contracts, but specifically, are there any gotchas? My typo. Are there any gotchas in the in this contract that I should be aware of? Let's give that a run. We've just, I'm going to save time, and that's been ran for the last 40 seconds. You can see that we're going off to the embedding model to embed our questions, um, and we're going to pass those over to the knowledge graph and over to OpenAI, and we've got some responses. So are there any questions, any gotchas in the contract that I should be aware of? Um, this is an interesting one, because it will then break down specifically, like. Uh, Completion date anomaly. Uh, the mission is stated to commence at the 15th of March, 1319, but some of them say the 20th of February, 1319. There are differences between the contracts, and you should be aware of that. If you're using this on a more specific use case, you would find those those references. Um, yeah. So you can see that we get some good responses out of it, some good thorough responses out of it. But let's step into the MS Graph Rag and look into that a little bit. So the because MS Graph Rag is the Graph Rag library that they've open sourced. Is that is that right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. 
Gabby. Yeah. So this is the open source library that got released, I want to say, three weeks, four weeks yep. ago at this point. Yep. Pretty recently. Um, so it's all all brand new. We okay. we're setting some we're setting some variables that we're going to use down the road that are set in our environment variables that get passed to our settings.yaml. So we've called those in. Here you can see that the same directory of contracts are being used. We're calling those in. We can see the contents of those. We're going to split those documents out and create normal vector embeddings. And we're going to save those vector embeddings as a packet. And that's important to remember. So we've got a file that's just holding text and embeddings in the same location that we're holding our graph rag index. And we're going to impl implement a cosine similarity and embedding search on the on that parquet so we can compare a normal embeddings versus a graph rag embeddings. And we'll okay. go on to that a little bit more. Um, here we're setting some purple functions, um, how we want to use that graph rag query engine. And here we're setting how we want to use our query. So how we're going to execute our query. So you can see that we're using graph rag query. We're setting that as global. And we're saying summarize this in one to two paragraphs. So you can see that we're using that function, ask graph, what is the purpose of this contract? Purpose of the contract, yep. Oh, when I go, we're getting a response that's detailed on those specific contracts that we're using. Very cool. But I think I think the real power of this notebook is when we come in and pass it a couple of questions, and then we can ask embeddings, and we can ask graph at the same time, and we can nice. compare those results. So. Specifically, let's look at which members of the fellowship are consistently list, listed across all contracts and which members vary or appear only in specific contracts. So this is the vector embeddings. You know, we're, we're seeing everyone we should expect, but we're only seeing Gandalf the Grey. I would expect to see Gandalf the White. If you know Lord of the Rings, there's a whole point where he turns into Gandalf the White. Luckily, Graph Rag has caught that. So you can see that it can see an entity that is called Gandalf, but it can recognize that there's both Gandalf the Grey, Gandalf the White which is kind of the power and the whole reason you would want to implement a graph rag mm -hmm. implementation is that you're seeing a much more networked entity resolution than you would expect to see in the embedding vectors. Yeah. Very Gabby, cool. you've got any questions? That was a very high, quick overview of MS Graph Rag, Llama Index, and the Microsoft version. Well, I've, um, I've got a question then. So you've showed an implementation with Llama Index and uh, Microsoft Graph Rag library what would you what was your preference oh very good question um i actually like the llama index one okay. though it's though i've not spent a lot of time with it the time that i have spent with it has been very i've got very good results in a very quick time rather okay. than the microsoft flavor which has only just been released there yeah. isn't much documentation on it yeah. from the community. There's good wiki pages, but until people start using this more, we're not going to see more out of it. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So the functionality in terms of you know implementing GraphRack using Llama Index and Microsoft GraphRack library, would you say there's much of a difference? Would you say the Llama Index yeah. is more performant yeah. compared to uh, Microsoft GraphRack library? Definitely. So the Llama Index is definitely more performant. The local Microsoft flavor runs on my machine and stores it, stores the parquet files locally. And I, though I get good responses, good contextual responses, I want to see this in a production environment to see the performance that is out of that. Yeah, makes sense, right? It, uh, yeah, it matters. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. I think that was episode three. Very good. So what have we got to look forward to episode four, Chris? What are we doing there? So in episode four, we're going to go deep into Langchain's implementation of Graph Rag. Uh, we're going to see the graph that was created, and we're going to use it a little bit, little bit more maturely um, in the sense of using our chat history to get responses, that kind very of thing. Good. So, OK, very cool. Uh, I can't wait. I'll see you in episode four then. So see you in thank four. you very much. Thank you very much for coming on, Chris. I'll see you very soon. Cheers, Gabby. Bye.